Hey guys, Julian here. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Bardock and why we think he's the original Super Saiyan God and the original Super Saiyan. So, spoiler alert, for you guys that haven't seen the new Bardock special, I'm going to be talking about it. So if you haven't seen it either, pause my video, go watch it, it's only like 20 minutes long, or just press the watch later button on my video and come right back. So let's get started. Um, Bardock, the lower class Saiyan from Planet Vegeta. So you guys can understand me a bit better. I'm going to let the film theorists explain the premise of our theory. Compare the beam collision to that of stars in outer space. Looking at their collision patterns, when two big balls of plasma combine at moderate to high speeds, they splash outward, like we see in the Goku Vegeta battle. But they also fuse together Fusion into a swirling mass of energy. Their magnetic fields reorganize into a ball shape before. Well, in space, they create a black hole. In Dragon Ball, it doesn't go that far. So for my theory to work, we pretty much have to accept that when Frieza's supernova crashes into planet Vegeta, it created a black hole and sent Bardock into the past. So far into the past that planet Vegeta hasn't been inhabited by Saiyans or Tuffles yet. I presume that Bardock is sent back in time a minimum of a thousand years. Now, how did I get a thousand years? Research my friends, lots and lots of research. When he wakes up, he's being treated by two aliens, the village doctor, Ipana, and his son, Barry. Bardock makes a remark that the medicine used to heal him is similar to the fluid in the medicine machines, and Ipana says that the name of the planet that they're on is called Planet Plant, and that happens to be the old name of Planet Vegeta. So Bardock then starts to wonder if he is in fact in the past. So it pretty much looks and feels like Planet Vegeta, just a bit more ancient. And remember, there are no medicine capsules around. Well, that's because the medicine capsules haven't been invented yet. The medicine capsules are a finished product derived from years of research and experimentation. And in the episode of Bardock, the medicine capsule is still in its primordial stage, its infancy. So at this point in time, since we're in the past, it's just a home remedy and not it and not a uh, perfected scientific procedure yet so it definitely does seem like we're in the past also to prove that bardock is in the past he fights a space pirate known as lord chilled in the special chilled can't seem to transform into other forms like let's call them his descendants frieza and cooler now lord chilled is powerful but not as powerful as his descendants and I believe it's because of the transformations since they are so far back in time the power to transform for his race hasn't been discovered yet so Lord Chilled as we see here even though he is powerful he is very small in stature and just like our human evolution we started out very small and now the average human height is about five six or so so this small frame and inability to transform ultimately led to Lord Chill's defeat. Because unlike Chilled, in the battle with Bardock, the stress of the fight triggered the Super Saiyan transformation in Bardock. And I think in the special, he actually skipped the level and went directly to Super Saiyan 2. So let's have a quick sidebar about that little side note. I think he went Super Saiyan 2 maybe because Bardock still has his tail as he's transforming into a Super Saiyan. So let's go a bit off topic for that. Um, so pay attention and try and stay with me. I strongly believe that Bardock is the original Super Saiyan, right? But Brawly is the legendary Super Saiyan as well. Now we consider Brawly because of his immense power. When 
Bardock and Brawly power up, they also seem to warp time and space around them or when they power up, they warp the energy around them. But remember, Bardock is just as strong as Brawly. And they also don't transform into Super Saiyans in the conventional progressive way as in stage one, two, or three that we're all accustomed to. In this pick, this would be probably Super Saiyan 1 stage. It's not your average looking Super Saiyan 1 transformation. It's unusual. In Bardock, it's unusual in a different manner because to date, he's the only Saiyan to transform with a tail. Remember, GT isn't canon, so it doesn't count. And speaking of your average transformation, I don't think Bardock even has a Super Saiyan 1 level. Seeing as how he went Super Saiyan 2 midway into the fight with Lord Chilled, uh, the battle triggered the Super Saiyan 2 transformation, not the Super Saiyan 1. So I'm assuming the Super Saiyan 2 is actually his Super Saiyan base form or his form 1. So this guy is pretty powerful if Super Saiyan 2 is actually his Super Saiyan 1 form. So I guess to qualify as a legendary Super Saiyan, you need to have a peculiar way of transforming into a Super Saiyan. And you also need to have this time energy warping type of aura. And you also need to have this immense power. So with these three requirements to become a legendary Super Saiyan, and as how we're in the past, Brawly hasn't been born yet, I think this will qualify Bardock as the original Super Saiyan of Legends. But let's get back on topic. So Lord Chilled gets his butt handed to him by the newly transformed Super Saiyan 2 Bardock. And as Lord Chilled made his retreat with his dying breath, he said to tell his family to beware of the Super Saiyans. So Lord Chilled's knowledge about the Super Saiyans was passed down to his descendants, leading up to present tense Frieza. And I think this is where Frieza's prejudice and fear of the Saiyans come from, or Super Saiyans come from. So back to that magic number of a thousand years. Where did I get this number from? Since Bardock becomes a Super Saiyan 2 in the special, and Goku's transformation into a Super Saiyan on, is on planet Namek, was said to be the first appearance of a Super Saiyan in over a thousand years, the events taking place after Bardock has been sent back in time must obviously take place at least 1,000 years before Frieza and Goku's battle on planet Namek. I know it's confusing, it's a time paradox, time loop sort of thing, but in a nutshell, Bardock is sent back in time 1,000 years, he transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 in the past, his legend is passed down through time. So now that we pretty much established the timeline, I think we can safely say that Bardock is the original Super Saiyan of Legends. But how does that make him a Super Saiyan God? In the movie Battle of Gods, Shenron pretty much says that it takes five Super Saiyans to make the Super Saiyan God, right? So Trunks, Vegeta, Gohan, Goten, and baby fetus Pan. But no, I think Shenron, I think you might be wrong here. We all know if you tell a friend a story and he tells eight other people that same story, and that eighth person comes back to you and tells you that story, the details might have been changed somewhat. Now, how about a legend retold over and over and over for a thousand years? For our Super Saiyan God theory, we've come up with about three possible and very viable scenarios. Now in the movie Battle of Gods, there is a major discrepancy here. Seeing as how Videl is in the power transfer circle, how does her being there not weaken, not strengthen, or nullify the power transfer? It, it's weird that she's even there. Obviously Videl, uh, Pan isn't born yet, but I don't think the numbers here really matter. I believe Goku, in his case, he needed five bodies. Well, that's because the majority of the Saiyans that were in his circle were all pretty much half humans. I mean, uh, well, yeah, half humans, half Saiyans, and one quarter Saiyan with Pan. 
and then you also have one human thrown into the mix and to conclude you only have one full-blooded Saiyan that being Vegeta so for scenario one okay fine let's let's stay within the confines of the transformation legend that Shenron told us so maybe you really do need five but does it have to be Saiyans like I said before, Videl was in Goku's power transfer, as well as the other Saiyans. So I'm guessing that you only need a majority of Saiyans, and a minority might not really matter. In Bardock's case, he had the majority of Saiyans, which were four pure-blooded, 100% homegrown Saiyans. And also remember, he had one Kanasin, named Tulo, which would give us a total of five thus enabling him to transform into God in a hypothetical past slash future scenario. So for scenario 2 to work, I think that the transformation legend could be slightly off. I mean it's a legend and it's been retold over and over and over for a thousand years. For so for scenario 2, maybe you only need 4 instead of 5 to do this power transfer. In Dragon Ball Z, Bardock, the father of Goku, even though we don't see it happen there, let's assume it did. And in the Dragon Ball Z universe, it's been proven that power transfers can happen without physically touching the intended target. It's called a key transfer. And like I said before, it's a theory, so let's just play along. So, Bardock gathers key from his four fallen comrades, the Bardock elite. But you can rebuttal and say, why didn't it work for Goku when he tried it the first time with only four Super Saiyan Z warriors? And like I said before, the majority in that power circle were all half-breeds. And another thing is that in this power circle, nobody here has matching power levels. I mean, we have that age-old story from Vegeta to Goku, and just right there, we have a huge power gap. Gohan has stopped training too, so we don't even know. Maybe Goten, Goten and Trunks could possibly be stronger than him at this point. So in Goku's instance, we have a power discrepancy going into him. And like I said before, the majority in his power circle are all half-breeds. In Bardock's case, even though the Bardock elite did die, I guess for argument's sake, let's say Bardock was uh, slightly stronger than them. So. If you were to put them on a scale of 1 through 10, let's say Bardock, the Bardock Elite in that instance were, let's label them an 8, and Bardock being the team leader was a solid 10. And remember, everyone in his squad, everyone here is a fully grown adult, and they're all 100% sane. Also, the Super Saiyan Z Warriors didn't die. They only gave Goku a percentage of their key so he can transform. So they didn't give Goku their entire life energy. The Bardock Elite did die, hence he was able to drain them completely of all, and I mean all their life force or key energy. And all that key energy went straight into Bardock. And like we saw in Fukatsu no F or Revival of F, with some training new levels can definitely be achieved. So for scenario 2, like I said before, maybe you only need 4 instead of 5 with some training. And with some training, Bardock could definitely transform into a god in a hypothetical past slash future scenario. So let's finish it off with scenario number 3. So in scenario 3, this one is actually my favorite. It's a theory within a theory. You guys remember Frieza had recalled all Saiyans back to planet Vegeta, and only a handful of Saiyans disregarded that recall order. Remember, it's a theory, so be open-minded. So as Frieza is destroying planet Vegeta with his supernova, we can see that the supernova is coming closer and closer, and the heat from it is almost melting Bardock away. His armor, his clothes basically evaporate, but remember, he isn't dead. He's almost slipping into a coma, let's say. And do you guys remember what happens to a Saiyan when he gets near fatal injuries? The Zenkai boost. Plus remember Bardock is absorbing in key on a planetary scale from all of his dying brethren. 
And remember Tulo, the Kanasin, who had transferred the power of Foresight into Bardock? What I mean with that Kanasin Foresight uh, statement is that it seems that Bardock, or Saiyans in general, can accept power from other races as well. So, Goku and Piccolo have power transferred into each other on numerous of occasions. Goku had transferred some Super Saiyan energy into Frieza at one time. And let's take it into a movie. In the Brawly movie, everyone transferred their power to Goku, which included Piccolo again and Namekian to defeat Brawly. What I'm getting at is Frieza had sent out his men to uh, face a planet full of Saiyans. So not only is Bardock Zenkaiing up, but he's also absorbing from a planet full of 100% full-blooded saints and other enemy aliens alike, aka the Freezer Force. So we're talking a power transfer in the hundreds of thousands, and you can't rebuttal this and say that that's impossible, even a saying like Bardock can't take in all that key. But on the contrary, my friends, his son has done it. You're like, what? No way, I've never seen that. Well, you have. And that was in the Majin Buu Saga. Goku collected life energy, or ki, from every living being from across the universe to make a universal spirit bomb to defeat Majin Buu. And Planet Vegeta, compared to the size of the universe, is rather small in comparison. And if that's not enough, in the movie where he faced off against the androids, Goku absorbed a planetary-sized spirit bomb into himself, which in a nutshell, his aura became a weapon. So if his son could do it on a universal scale, an earthly scale, and absorb it into himself in other instances, Bardock absorbing Ki on a planetary scale would be child's play for the original Super Saiyan of Legends. And with all this power, it can easily enable him to transform into a god in a hypothetical past slash future type of scenario. So to be honest with you guys, scenario 3 is the one that I like the most. But that's it for me today guys, that's um, actually I know we went pretty long today. So if you guys have anything we had to uh, say, please subscribe and tell us what you think about the Bardock being a god and the original. Super Saiyan of Legends. I love to read your comments and remember to please subscribe. There's a little bomb icon located at the right bottom side of the screen that will automatically subscribe you to my channel. Well then, till next time. Later guys.